Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Benasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent demonstrator in the United States. Today I am going to be playing with a brand new technique. At least it's new to me and I've really not seen it done before. So I'm sure it's not new to everybody, but I'm hoping it's new to you because I always love to share with you new things that I learn. We are going to be making a telescoping technique card. And I've got a couple others to share with you. This is part of the Totally Techniques Global Design Team blog hop for the month of August. Now, when you get to the end of my video, there's gonna be a little pop-up in the top right corner. That, when you click on it, will take you right to this particular blog post on my blog. You won't have to hunt around, it'll be there. And when you scroll down the page, after you see my project, you will see some little thumbnails. Each one of those is going to take you to a new blog. So you're gonna click on one, it's gonna take you to a new blog. Again, scroll down after you look at their projects and click on the next thumbnail. Everybody's doing this technique, so I can't wait to see what everybody has made with the telescoping technique. And I hope that you enjoy my card. Let's flip this around and I'll share all the details with you. Not only am I excited about this new technique, but I'm excited to be sharing a brand new suite with you. This suite of products is going to be available in our September through December mini catalog that starts on September 4th. So we are going to take advantage of the Autumn Expressions stamp set. There are nine different stamps in here. We've got some really nice sentiments and a few images. And then a set of dies with all kinds of interesting elements in it. And I'll give you all the details on those. We are going to be using the foam adhesive strips as well as dimensionals. These are brand new and they are called faux glass dots and some beautiful fall colors that are going to coordinate with the gorgeous paper. I'm going to use one of these woven golden leaves and share with you how to attach them. And then here is the absolutely beautiful splendid autumn designer series paper. This comes in a pack of six by six. And we've got some beautiful scenery and then a very pretty, almost solid, but not quite pattern on the back of these pages. So I'll just run you through these. You get four of each sheet. Some are autumn, some are floral, some are just kind of pretty scenery that isn't autumn, I guess is a good way to put that. Oh, did I show you the back of this one? Oh, that was the first one I pulled out. Here we go with this. Isn't that so pretty? All of the coordinating colors are shown on the back of the designer series paper, and there's a lot of them in this pack. So we've got this absolutely gorgeous with that bright green. Here's another beautiful pattern. So pretty. This was the first one I think I showed you. Yep, with that green. Look at that. Nice little pathway going in between these gorgeous trees. Another kind of a moody looking sky. I think I already showed you that one. I made a card with this, so I'll share that with you using this telescoping technique. I just love these and it's all kind of watercolored maybe chalked I'm not really sure but oh so so pretty maybe it's oil painting that might be what it is anyways this again is called Splendid, Splendid Autumn Designer Series Paper and it was perfect for what I wanted to do with this particular technique so we've also got some linen thread and one thing you need for this technique is some nesting dies. So I pulled in the um, nested essentials. I talked about this and these. I've also got the early espresso ink pad, some mini glue dots, and my basic tools. Paper snips, scissors, my bone folder, and my take your pick tool. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to bring in 
my cardstock. I am going to be using a card base of Cajun Craze. This is eight and a half by five and a half. I've already scored it at four and a quarter. Next, I've got a layer of crushed curry that is four by five and a quarter. Did I say five and a quarter on this? It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I think I did say that. Then I decided to use this particular pattern of the designer series paper. I cut this down to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I have some scraps here. I've got cherry cobbler, Cajun craze, mossy meadow, and crushed curry. And then a layer for the inside that is four by five and a quarter. This is our basic white. And a three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch piece of that same, whoops, <laughs> same designer series paper right off the edge over here. So I think what we'll do here first is we'll get the inside of our card made up and get that put together. My early espresso ink will come in handy for a really pretty sentiment on the inside. Now I plan on putting this little strip right over here and I'm gonna use the Grateful For You and I really love the font on this. I love fonts, so I'm a font girl. I'm gonna set that right in there. That turned out great. Please note that I did not glue this down prior to getting um, my sentiment on there because if I make a mistake, I can just flip it over and go again. I haven't wasted this piece by gluing it on a side that I'm not going to use. Okay, there we go. That looks great. I'm using multi-purpose liquid glue. This is something that we have in our Stampin' Up! store. It is my favorite adhesive. It goes a long ways and... Um, you have a little wiggle room to move things around. If you find you've done something crooked, you can move it, adjust it a little bit. Okay, then we are going to add our crushed curry layer. That's four by five and a quarter. Get that on here. And now we're gonna work with this layer and we're gonna do our technique right away. So one thing I wanted to share with you, I'm going to be using the nested essentials dies, which of course has the nesting dies, which is exactly what we need for this particular technique. We also have the stylish shapes, which would work great. The countryside corners are nesting dies, the deckled rectangles, and I also pulled out perennial postage as I was designing my card to figure out exactly what I wanted to use. But I chose these nested essentials because they actually worked out perfect for me. So you can do as many dies as you'd like. We have four in each one of these shapes, but I'm only gonna use the inside three. So I didn't use the largest one. And I'm going to bring my dies in here. I just pick a place on my um, scenery paper the beautiful splendid autumn and I'm going to just set my dies in here. I'm going to try really hard to get them straight and you can use washi tape or any type of temporary tape will work great for this. Now I'm sticking this to my clothing and pulling it up just to take a little bit of sticky off of it, not necessarily my arm, but I was sticking it to my shirt because I just pulled this off. It's temporary tape. And I'm gonna get this one in place first, and then I'm going to get this centered in here so I have the same margins on all the sides. And then my last one right here in the middle, and I'm just trying to kind of hang on to all of these. You can adjust them once you get this tape down here. I think that looks, whoops, that's a little crooked. Let's see what we have here. So I'm just holding all of these down. That looks really good to me. So I'm gonna roll with that. Now I'm gonna bring in my die cutting machine. This is our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to set all three of these on here just like this. And again, that tape just keeps everything where I want it to be. Make sure that that looks straight to me. And it does. I just was looking at this, this um, edge down here. 
And we're gonna roll that through. Let me get this put back over where it belongs. Never too far from me. I use that thing every day that I'm stamping. Okay, now we're gonna pop this out. Be gentle with your temporary tape. Pushing it through that machine sometimes can mash it onto your paper pretty hard, so you wanna be gentle with it. We're gonna get this off of here. And then here is, let me bring this in. This is a paper piercing mat, and I just wrap it with type or printer weight paper and tape it on the back. This is what I use to stamp with. So here are our nesting pieces. I'm gonna put this away before I lose it. Oh, here we go. I was looking for my pack of dies. I like that these stick on here nicely with that tape that comes with, they come this way. So that tape will just stick them right back in place. Okay, now we have to do a little prep work to these three pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab my foam adhesive strips. I'm using foam adhesive strips and dimensionals. Now, if you don't have any of these foam adhesive strips, you can use two stacks of dimensionals. You wanna stack them up to be um, too deep. But what I find with these is they're a little bit thicker than our dimensionals, which is gonna raise up my layer to do this telescoping technique. And I already have a piece that I cut off of the long, um, pack of them. So I'm going to pull off one of these strips and I'm going to add these to the back. Now one of the little tips I'm going to share with you, once we get this card done, if it bothers you that when you're looking at your card you can see that white under there of these dimensionals, you can take a marker and color them to match your cardstock so that that doesn't appear blatantly dis a, a different color. I guess that's a good way to put it. But you can color the side of the dimensionals to uh, eliminate that problem. That's a good way to put it. And I'm just popping these on here, cutting them off. So now that we have this on here, now we can go to the next one. And again, these are the adhesive strips. Now I'm going to use dimensionals. And these are the mini dimensionals. They have a really wide border on them and that's why I like them for this type of, whoops, <laughs> good grief, this type of technique that I'm doing. So on the back of your frame, I am just going to snip these to make some long or narrow pieces, I should say, some narrow pieces to put on the back of my second to largest frame. And I'm just gonna set these on here. Whoops, that was the wrong side. I like to use my take your pick tool for these kind of little pieces because um, I don't know about you, but handling them with my fingers tends to cause me a lot of grief. <laughs> like grief in that oh, I can't get them off my fingers or they're so tiny, they're hard to handle. And so my take your pick tool really takes that problem out of the equation. So we're going to get this on here straight. This one looks a little wide. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to take the narrower ones. I think that's going to work better. And I did mean to put that kind of off to the side, so I'm going to have to add a couple extra ones there because I want to give this decent support. I'll just put... One over here and then I'll cut another one here. I didn't need three here but I put it in the wrong place. I wanted it spread out better. Okay so we have uh, adhesive strips, dimensionals, and nothing. What we're going to do with this piece now is we're going to add it back to our card front. So I'm going to put a very thin line of liquid glue. Make sure that we're going right side up here, yep. 
and this has a really thin margin around the outside. It's only like a sixteenth of an inch on each side. Okay, so far so good. I love the scenery on this particular pattern. And now we have to put this back in like a puzzle piece. So I want to make sure that I have these right side up. There we go. I'm going to take the backing off. And again, that take your pick tool comes in really handy. Make sure that you've pressed these down good so they don't come off when you try to get your backing off. I've had that happen and it's like, ah, right? It's like, I should have pushed that down a little harder. And again, just like a puzzle piece, we're gonna set this down in here. You don't wanna press it down until you can take a look at it and see that you have your puzzle piece in place. And this looks like I've got it a little low. So thank goodness I didn't press that down right away. It's a little hard when I can't really stick my head in the camera. <laughs> you guys might see a few of my gray hairs. Oh, that looks perfect. Okay, so you can see that. And again, if that white on that edge bothers you, just take a marker and color it. Now we're gonna do the next piece. Almost looks like a little license plate holder. I say that because my daughter's bought a car and in the state of Wisconsin, we have to have front license plates on our vehicles and it didn't have a holder for it. She had a heck of a time finding the right thing to put her license plate on. Okay, now this, remember, has smaller dimensionals, so this is going to go down inside just like a puzzle piece. This one should be a lot easier to put on there because it fits right inside. And you can see how that is telescoping in. And now this last one, we want to make sure that it's right side up to go into our puzzle. And we're going to take that one and we're going to drop that one right inside here also. And there we go. Here is our telescoping. It's telescoping in. Isn't that fun? Now we need to decorate this. Very, very cool technique. I really like this. And I do have two more cards that I made using different shapes. Well, not different. One is different. The other one is the same shape, but different paper. So I'll be able to share those with you. Now what I wanted to do was decorate this puppy. So I decided to take my dies and I am going to use this particular die on my crushed curry. Couldn't think of the word. And then I'm also going to die cut, oh, let me show this to you, this leaf. And again, this is from the Autumn Expressions dies. We've got this leaf. I'm going to die cut this leaf on the Mossy Meadow, the Cajun Craze, and the Cherry Cobbler. Okay. And then you can see what I did here. I mean, I should have had this cleaned out before I started my video. I am going to stamp the word friend. So we've got this that says dear friend. I only want the word friend. So I'm going to grab a piece of scotch tape and I'm going to cover up the dear part of my stamp. We're going to ink that up in our early espresso ink. Don't forget to take this part off. And I'm going to put that right in my garbage so I don't get ink all over. Well, I already did it. <laughs> Be careful with that because that'll get ink all over your hands from that tape. I, I didn't do too bad. Well, there's a little bit there. Okay, and I'm going to stamp this right on here. Okay. Then, let me cut this off. I'm going to take this and add it right to, this is like a hinge for this frame. This frame is really cool. It has a hanger die that goes with it. Um, it also has this, whoops, this that goes in here. You can die cut that and then die cut this hanger. It's just all very, very cool. We're only gonna use this part for this card right here. So I am going to 
center this in my die. I'm going to add a little bit of temporary tape to hold that in place and I'm gonna die cut that. I'm gonna die cut all the rest of these leaves and I will be right back. Okay, here comes all my bits and pieces. I've got my mossy meadow, my Cajun, or my um, crushed curry, my cherry cobbler, Cajun craze, and then here's that little friend label. Now we can decorate our card. So let's see how, oh, and I took one of these woven golden leaves. These are super pretty. And I'm gonna use that on my card too. So what I thought I would do is I was kind of thinking of stacking some leaves right over here. And let's see, let's put maybe a green one in here next. And how about, do we wanna go with a Cajun craze one? Now I might have to cut these off because I've got those dimensionals under there and they're kind of getting in my way for the stacking. Nope, I wanna go with this one next. Yep, and then maybe I'll go with this one. Oh, that's looking pretty, right? And then I'll go with these two down here. So I might have to trim those off just a little bit. And I thought the best way to do this would be to stack them together with mini glue dots. Now, this golden leaf, that's the way that I plan on gluing those onto my cards is with a mini glue dot and then layering on top of them. So I've got my mini glue dot right there. And if I wanted to, I could trim this up just a little bit. I just cut the end off of it and I'm gonna put it right under there. So now I've got it stuck down and I could actually add another one of the mini glue dots under there. Let's do that. Let's just add another one. There we go. Now we've got it in place good. And then I'm gonna come in with this one. And I think I'll use another, whoops, mini glue dot. I've got them sticking all over the place here. Grab another mini glue dot and just put that on there. I need to be delicate. These are delicate, so I don't wanna tear it apart. So we'll do this. And now we might have to trim up some of these. And I think I'm just going to trim that up. I would have tucked it under here, but I already have my um, layer down. So again, I'm just gonna stick with my mini glue dots. Whoops. Oh my goodness. What am I doing wrong? I'm trying to pull it up too hard. Nope, that's not working. I think it's because this was run through the machine and that breaks down the cardstock and makes it a little more pliable. So I'll drop that right in there. And then I think I'll put this one right up here. So I'm going to cut just a little bit of that off. See how that fits in there. Yep, that's exactly what I want to do. So yay us. right on the back and I'm gonna tuck that whoops man get that push down okay oh my goodness I'm loving this and then we'll do a few more over here and again I'm going to just trim this up and I can use glue on this one. We're not dealing with a, a metal mesh leaf. So I'll just grab my glue. And then I think I'll tuck this one in here too. Cut a little bit of that off. Just like that. Ugh, I love this. Now, what am I gonna do with this? Well, <laughs> I think this would look nice right in the middle there, and I'm gonna pop that up on some dimensionals. That's gonna just kind of fit right in that little frame that I've created with that telescoping technique. And here we go. 
Oh, I love this. One of the other things that I wanted to add was just a little bit of linen thread. So let me grab that. I got to put my picture of my mom and my granddaughter back up there that just fell down. And I'm thinking, this is a bow jig. It's nothing more than a piece of wood with some holes in it and um, some nails. So I'm gonna cut two pieces of linen thread. And you could just tie a bow, you know, tie a bow. But I like to use this thing because my bows are perfect and easy. But that's all I've got here is what I call a bow jig. It's a jig for tying bows. And I love the way they turn out when I, perfect, every time. So if you have somebody with a drill and a scrap of wood and some nails, you can make one. And I was thinking, maybe I would, ooh, I like that. Do you guys like that? I think I like that. I much prefer a live audience so I can get some feedback on some of these ideas. And I forget sometimes that I'm not live right now. I'm going to just put a mini glue dot in there. And then I'm going to tuck my linen thread right under there. Oh, so cool, right? Now we need some embellishments. And I was thinking, these again are the um, faux glass dots, they're called. And I'm going to pull them right off of there and see. I think I want to use the ones that are kind of a Cajun craze color. And I will just pick those up with my take your pick tool and add them to the front of my project. I wanna put one right there. Oh, I think that looks great. Now, what do you guys think? Isn't that fun? Ah, I love it. Um, I'm gonna grab an envelope. I always like to have an envelope stamped up to match my cards. So I'm gonna grab some Cajun Craze and let's see, Mossy Meadow and Crush Curry. And we've got a stamp in this Autumn Expressions set that's a leaf. There's also a die to cut this out. So I think what I'll do, is grab a scrap of paper and put it in between my envelope flap and make a bunch of different colored leaves. I've got the um, chamois to clean my stamps. I love that thing. Got mossy meadow here. in from this way. I like to make them look very random. Oh, I just stuck my finger in the ink. And then some Cajun craze. And fill these in. Oh, beautiful, beautiful fall colors. And how about just one more little bit right there? And here we have a really pretty envelope to match our gorgeous card here. Isn't that fun? I love this. I love this bundle, Autumn Expressions. It's a whole suite. And it actually comes with the um, golden leaves, the faux glass dots, the designer series paper, the stamp set, and the dies, and then this fabulous rustic striped ribbon that's really pretty. So there's a whole suite. None of these projects are available until September 4th, so I don't want anybody going online looking for them until then because they're 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 not available yet. I did say I was going to share some other cards that I made with you. Here is another card that I made using the um, same exact nested essential dies. So this was just a different piece of paper. I've got fresh freesia down here. I stamped the you've got this right on the inside 
and then just added that strip of designer paper from the Splendid Autumn DSP and wrapped some linen thread around there. And then I've got this little beauty. And again, the nested essentials. I used these dies to cut out the flowers and put them right back in there just like a um, puzzle. And then I used that dear friend and put a little bow on here. And then I did stamp the inside here. Have a perfectly lovely day. Oh my gosh, what do you guys think? I was so excited to do these. I've never done this before and I love the, um, I love the, the different layers, the telescoping technique. Now, this is going to be my August Technique Club project. And um, this is the little instruction sheet. This video is posted on today, August 30th. And of course it gives you some step-by-step -step directions here. And for the little sample, each person is going to get a card with the technique and then they get this card with the sample for the technique on it. I use the stylish shapes. And again, I used the three, um, oh, there's another, there's a littler one in here too. So I use the three smallest squares. Here they are. Let me grab those. I use the three smallest, here we go, three smallest squares to create the little sample for the instruction card. So super fun if you have, um, if you'd like any information, if you're in the United States and you'd like information on my Technique Club, I will have a link under the video on YouTube and also on my blog where you can check out details for that. Thank you so much for joining me today for this fantastic new technique, new to me anyways. You're gonna click right up here. That's gonna take you to my blog where you'll find pictures of these projects. I'll also um, put the dimensions in there. I'll have a list of the products that I use. I usually have a clickable link, but remember these products don't go um, out to the public, be available to the public until September 4th, which is next week, Wednesday. So yay. Also, if you would like to get a copy of our brand new mini catalog and you live in the United States, please pop me an email at kelly at estampabove.com, just kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at estampabove.com. I would be happy to mail a catalog to you. Don't forget to include your address. Please make sure that you click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't wanna miss anything I have coming out. I am live on YouTube every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. And again, thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Let your creativity sparkle. Give this a try. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.